We are not afraid, and our resolve will never waver in the face of terrorism. What I can confirm is that the man was British-born, and that some years ago he was once investigated by MI5 in relation to concerns about violent extremism. That was British Prime Minister Theresa May speaking in Parliament just a few hundred feet from where terrorist Khalid Massoud murdered a police officer and several bystanders in a violent rampage yesterday. The Trump administration has already sent its condolences to Great Britain, but does the administration see any policy implications from that attack? Katie McFarlane is the Deputy National Security Advisor to the President. She joins us from the White House. Thanks a lot for coming on tonight. Um, what are the specific policy implications for the United States of this attack, do you think? Well, I think it's just pretty obvious that the attacks are growing, that the threat is not gone, that you can't look away from what's happening. In fact, yesterday, while I was conducting and uh, ministerial, there were 68 nations of the anti-ISIS coalition. We were at the State Department, and I was moderating the discussion of the 68 foreign ministers and going around the room asking, you know, what are you seeing in North Africa? How has the threat evolved in Asia? What are the efforts we're making to shut down terrorist finance? What do you see happening with foreign fighters returning from the battlefield in Iraq and Syria to the homelands? And as we were going around the room talking about it, we got word that there were att the attacks in London. And so the Foreign Secretary of Great Britain, Boris Johnson, who was sitting right next to me, turned to him and said, very much clear of what's happened in the world today is this is getting worse. It's not getting any better. And he said, well, we, the British people, you know, we have had attacks like this before. We may have them again, but we are resolved. And the same um, sentiments that the Prime Minister May said today, which is that they are not going to be cowed by this, and we, the Western world, see this as an affront, an attack against all civilization, and we stand united. And that's, you know, the good thing about it, not that there's much to say that's good, but that there was a 68-member coalition, 68 nations, which are standing up and saying we are going to work together in every way we can to defeat this and to destroy radical Islam right. and to destroy ISIS and everything that follows. So to the extent you can uh, reveal it in public, mm -hmm. what are the specific steps do you think that we ought to be taking uh, that we haven't taken before, perhaps, to address this? Well, well, the Trump administration is looking at this as a whole of government. And right. yesterday at this ministerial, the, to, to make that case and the, and the demonstration of the symbolism of it, was the Secretary of State hosted it. I'm from the National Security Council. I ran the ministerial. The Secretary of Defense, Secretary Mattis, was there and spoke as well. And we had all of the senior cabinet members there, Secretary of the Treasury, Secretary of Homeland Security. So I think the policy implications are that it's an immediate threat. It's something that the president is considering. We have uh, Secretary Mattis has just given to the president a comprehensive plan to deal with radical Islam, but also with ISIS in the region of Iraq and Syria. And it's something that the President Trump understands it's not just going to be some sanctions. It's not just going to be a little effort in one part of the world, but it's going to be a broad and comprehensive effort, not just with the United States, but with our allies. Right. And radical Islam threatens us not only in the U.S. homeland, but throughout the world. So I have to ask you about Susan Rice, who mm -hmm. occupied a job not so different from yours, and she wrote a piece recently in the Washington Post scolding the Trump administration for its mm -hmm. misuse of language for, in effect, its lying to the public. What was your response to that? Well, in effect, you mean lying to the American public about the threat of radical Islam? Right. I mean, for using language that was uh, untrue, making claims that can't be supported. She basically scolded the Trump administration. Um, well, you know, I'm not sure that scolding anybody makes a whole lot of sense when you have a threat like this that just happened in right. London. Uh, it's the times for scolding and identifying problems and wringing our hands, it's over, whether it's in dealing with North Korea or whether it's dealing with the radical Islamist threat. The Trump administration and President Trump himself has made it very clear that we're not just going to talk about stuff and identify problems, but we're actually going to have some solutions. Katie McFarland, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. Thanks very much, Tucker.